Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new edition of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM. How self-explanatory is that? 28 songs that I wanted to talk about this week. As always, there's a Spotify link down below for all the songs and easy access if that is your way and means of listening to music. But otherwise, let's hop into the bad category. Songs I thought were uh, pretty bad. Uh, just remember, this is my opinion. Do not take it as gospel truth. Uh, we've got Vis V with Now or Never, uh, Generic Slap, slash tropical house that sounds like every other song of this style uh, the lyrics are meaningless and the production is very bland and then we got infect with doodle from the new back to back ep by infect and this is another case of kind of trench rhythm that i just don't understand really uh, both drops are the exact same repetitive jarring melody that isn't really expanded upon or uh played within a whole ton so uh this this one not not so much for me sorry infect there not a not a fan of that then we've got Nervo and Plastic Funk featuring Julia Temos with Talk About Us. A very boring commercial house track that didn't really need to be its own track. It's yet another short cover of an already popular song, and it's just unnecessary, and we don't need these songs. So, then moving into the meh category songs that I thought were uh, pretty meh. Uh, we've got Hilo and Lusu with Dizzy, uh, a big room techno track with very linear song structure and a vocal sample that's a little overpowering, I would say, in the mix. Um, pretty standard big techno track, uh, like similar to Enema, if that is your cup of tea. And then we got Oblivion and Lux Tides with Pouring Rain, a nice future-based track here with uh, lots of keyboard soloing. Uh, that being said, I do think the track is a little bit on the tamer side and could have used a, a jolt of energy somewhere on the track, especially considering the drops are fairly quick, so not too bad though. We've got Tritonal and RKTKT with Meant to Be, uh, a big room house cut with fine mixing and a melody that's uh, pretty familiar, all things considered. Uh, a nice tune, nothing mind-blowing. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's great. It's kind of somewhere in the middle, like a meh song. We got Jason Ross featuring Linny with Last Time from the new Divergence EP out now on Monster Cat by Jason Ross. And uh, yeah, this is a fine progressive house tune with a steady beat and a simple like vocal melody from Linny here. Uh, I'm very fascinated by this EP as a whole because it's got a ton of different genres on it. But otherwise, I thought this track in particular, this more prog house one, wasn't uh, anything super special and a little out of Jason Ross' comfort zone, which I do like artists going for. But uh, I just thought it was a little meh. And then we got Artie Etherwood and Jay Sorrow with In My Head from the new Favorite Sound LP out now by Artie. And uh, this is now the third time this track has been released just under uh, or with the same vocal sample, just um, mixed in with a different production feature, this being Etherwood here. Um, I don't know. In the end, it's just another fairly unnecessary in the kind of grand scheme of things that this is a more kind of liquid drum and bass production that doesn't feel overly unique, um, albeit the atmosphere is quite soothing, just to... An odd song, especially odd to do the same song with the same title three different times and make it sound different. And the only thing the same is the vocal sample. It's it's odd for me personally. Then we've got Matoma with Let Me. Bit of a throwback uplifting trance here with bright synth hits and a happy-go-lucky atmosphere. And that being said, it is a tad short and doesn't really fully explore the soundscape for me. And so um, I, I think I need to just put it in meh because it's not longer like trance uh, typically is and what I enjoy from trance. So... Then we got Chris Lake in Disclosure with In Two Minds. I am quite underwhelmed by this track, I would say. I think the 808s are super flat. I feel like the song keeps trying to go heavy into this Disclosure old school garage style, but it's constantly being pulled in a different direction. Uh, the two artists tend to feel more opposing than complementarian uh, on this one for some reason. Yeah, I just feel like Chris Lake and Disclosure didn't quite get the, the gel properly on this track in particular, so... Uh, they're moving into the good category songs I thought were pretty good. Uh, we've got Roy Knox, Down Without You, a short but action-packed track with big crashing synth leads. Uh, the mixing is a little flat at times, with the bass line being pretty absent, particularly in the second half of this track, but uh, it's a kind of purely festival tune that does go hard, so not too bad. We got BT and Matt Fax with Vertical, a very full sounding progressive trance cut with a unique song structure by practically kind of starting with a drop section and then having only one true drop movement here. But um, yeah, nothing overly new, like brand new, but still a very strong track, I would say. Then we got Nikki Romero and Emilia Rach Rach Rachelle? Rachel uh, with Holy, uh, another big room techno track with longer progressive movements and a fairly solid vocal performance from Emily here. Uh, I do think it's fairly generic in its sound, but I do enjoy it. Another one that uh, feels like it's, it's I've heard it before, but one that does it well, I'd say. 
And then we got Camarion with In My Bag, a new intense neurofunk, almost like breakbeat style cut with a dominant beat uh, and heavy synths all throughout. Um, it's a stylistic uh, switch up for Camarion, which uh, worked quite well in his favor, I would say, and a sound um, that does feel very on, like very on brand for Camarion, but also uh, fresh and new. So I enjoyed it. Then we got Nitro Fun with Power, a true callback to an early sound from Nitro Fun, albeit a little bit more on the chill side of things. Um, but yeah, but sonically, this is a true homage to the sound that put him on the map. It's a classic sound with a lot of nostalgia action, or with a lot of nostalgia in it. So then we got Veer with point zero point, uh, absolute balls to the walls, heavy rhythm that managed to actually really resonate with me. I've been fairly critical, I think, of Veer's kind of more same samey sounding production uh, in the last little bit, but uh, this feels like a next level production and an upgrade from uh, the Veer I've heard in the past. So enjoyed it. Then we got Armin Van Buren featuring Louis the Third with Part of Me. Uh, Armin playing around with some more tropical house now that the summer's over. Uh, and this might actually be one of the best tracks of the year from him, uh, I would have to say. Uh, Lewis's vocals here fit well with the production. And the whole track is kind of this well-packaged, put-together tune that uh, you'd kind of hear at a beach resort or something like that. So... Then we got Wales, Sultan, and Nat James with Go Stupid. I actually really enjoyed the big dubstep sounds from this latest cut, um, but just found them to kind of run its course a bit too quickly, I th I'd say. I think the hip-hop vocals worked great in the overall soundscape. I just wanted a bit more from this tune, and I wanted to keep going, so... We got Lewis the Child featuring 1996 Montana with Supercharger from the new The Sun Comes Up album by Lewis the Child after the singles have been released all year. Uh, but it's finally here. Uh, and this cut in particular is a poppy feature based tune that with the side chaining turned up to like 11. Um, I think this track and a majority of the record are fairly safe, kind of easy listening tunes. Um, nothing too out of left field, just a relatively simple honed in dance pop track. Then we've got AT Aliens featuring Gigi Madri with Black Sheep. Uh, the song definitely grew on me throughout the week, I must say. At first, I was very much not into it, uh, but I've come to appreciate uh, and take, uh, yeah, appreciate the take on a beloved kind of classic here um, with Black Sheep because I'm a big Scott Pilgrim vs. the World fan. And so, um, even though that's not Brie Larson and it's Gigi Madri, I still enjoyed it to some extent. Um, AT Aliens did a great job mixing up the formula of the original with these punchy and crunchy um, beats and production all around. And yeah, Gigi does a good job on the vocals, so. Then we've got Fabian Mazur with Old School. Uh, this track is a fun mix of kind of classical festival trap and the modern Isonox style. Uh, it even mixes in some funk elements for even more added enjoyment for me personally. It's a brilliant track that balances a lot of different eras and does it quite well. Then we got Tennyson and Leslie with Learnt to See from the new Dolphin EP by Tennyson and Leslie. Uh, yeah, this is a beautiful track with a chilled out atmosphere and a lighthearted tone to it. Uh, the song doesn't get overly intense, yet there is so much dynamicism to the mixing and production that keeps you um, from getting bored on a track that is a little bit more uh, down like this one. So nice cut from those two. As we move on to Shallow and Conroe with Carry Me Through from the new 24 Summer EP from Shallow. Shallow, Shallow? I'm going to say Shallow. Uh, this is an atmospheric progressive house track with Conroe's airy vocals uh, and Shallow's picturesque production that we typically get from either one of these two. And I think this was a brilliant collaboration. This was a track that I really, really enjoyed uh, and felt like a, a real summer vibe as we're coming to the end of summer at this point. So at least for us uh, North Americans. But or at least Western, even in Europe too. I guess the summer's ending, so. Uh, then we got Dirt Monkey with Light Years. Uh, I think the song takes a little bit to get going, but with the longer drop movements, uh, it easily makes up for it. Um, Dirt Monkey has such a unique sound that I can really uh, only describe as like melodic vomit step. Um, it has these big, dense synth growls, but yet they sound very pleasing. It's a super unique sound design and a killer mix on top of it all that makes this a pretty great track, I must say. Then we got Chime and Danakum with Make Em Proud. Uh, Chime's Ophelia debut is yet another brilliant melding of already established dubstep norms and trends and his kind of newly founded color base style. Um, even when Chime is putting on a track that's fairly uh, confined and not quite explosive as this one is, I would say, uh, it's still quite masterful. So way to go, Chime. Then we got Starseed with Ominous from the new Magical Thinking EP out now by Starseed. Uh, and this is just absolutely magical, melodic bass um, with big sauce and snappy percussion. Uh, genuinely one of the better melodic bass cuts I think I've heard from Ophelia this year. Um, Starseed, Ominous, go check it out. And then we got Matt Zoe with Bluish Yellow from the new Zoe Case EP, which is only three songs long, but just about 30 minutes, uh, which is amazing. Uh, yeah, this is very much a throwback cut uh, with a very, this one being 
in particular a nine minute runtime of a longer more drawn out progressive movements and this reminds me very much of like early 2010s electro sort of progressive house uh, and in a great way very similar style to dead mouse but very much his own kind of this is like old matt zo like early coming onto the scene matt zo that's what this track is like and then we've got my number one song of the week is Jamie XX featuring Rami and Oliver Sim. So this is essentially the XX um, with Waited All Night from the new In Waves uh, LP out now by uh, Jamie XX. Fantastic album. I must say, go listen to it. If you have not going to do anything else this week, go listen to In Waves. But yeah, I love seeing the XX back together in whatever form it is, whether it's production or um, like vocal features. But uh, yeah, this is definitely a highlight from the record with their kind of signature chilled out production and garage style beats. I absolutely love Rami's vocals on this thing. I think they're probably the strongest from the record holistically. And even Oliver Sim uh, also vocally is is quite strong. So um, this is absolutely stunning track that I almost put in standout. Um, but uh, yeah, go listen to the whole LP. It's, it's fantastic. But uh, that's been this week of DDM. Let me know what you guys think of any and all songs in the comment section below. But uh, other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.